Hello there. I'm Nelson Crawford from Working Class Music. Hi, I'm Tia from Working Class Music. I'm Xander Cook with Working Class Music. This is Jason from Working Class Music. And... I'm here to share my story. This is our story. This is a story. Of the Marshall Wall. So, on our second to last day in Fort Wayne, Indiana, hanging out at Sweetwater, we had on our itinerary to visit the Marshall Wall, and it was this giant stack that created a wall of marshals. All right, so what, was, what were your thoughts, like, walking up, like, you know, first hearing it? It. My thoughts walking up when first hearing it was this is very loud. It was a life-changing experience. I've um, bathed in the blood of Christ and come out the other side reborn. <laughs> On a serious note though, it was a lot of fun. And basically from the first time I saw it, I was like, <laughs> we gotta plug into that at some point. Oh man, the Marshall Wall was uh, was pretty cool. You could hear it from across the parking lot. Like, literally, you could hear it from like the other side of the campus, which makes no sense when you're talking about it. But if you knew how far that was, you'd be like, damn. So you walk out of the main Sweetwater building and you go across the parking lot. It's, I don't know, maybe about half a football field, maybe. Yeah, about half a football field. Yeah, it was about half a football field away, if not an entire football field away. Some yardage, some amount. So it was pretty cool. Like before we even walked up, someone else was playing it. And I know that most people have not been to Fort Wayne, Indiana, specifically to Sweetwater, but like leaving the actual, like I guess, headquarters, you could call it, leaving that main building, walking towards that stage where the Marshall Wall is. This amphitheater area where they had a stage set up for this wall of marshals. You could hear it before you even saw it, which was really impressive. And then like the closer you got, I felt like you could feel it more than you could, you could hear it. Not only does it get louder, but you start to feel it more. And it was almost ominous. Something that really added to the weight of what we were about to get into was as soon as you get to the amphitheater where the stage is, where the big wall of marshals are, there's somebody greeting you with earplugs if you don't have some already because there's no way you're getting that close to that thing without any sort of ear protection. You know, this ain't the 80s. And I was just like, this is loud. So a part of me was kind of intimidated because everybody had been shredding at that point before we walked up. While we were walking up, there were some other people playing, you know, doing the usual eruption, shredding, all that stuff on it. A lot of what you hear at these sorts of things. And I'm just like, well, I'm not shredder. <laughs> like, I'm no shredder. So a little bit of uh, anxiety, but in my mind, I was like, you may never get to do this again. But I, I was uh, excited. I was super excited. Yeah, no, uh, everyone should experience it. Everyone just needs to go buy a bunch of full stacks. <laughs> and recreate that in their backyard. Your neighbors will love you, I promise. It was really cool, really impressive. Um, they got it all wired up. I was super interested in seeing what the rest of the team would do with it because a wall of marshals, that's, that's Xander's bag right there. <laughs> likes big amps. I do big amps, it's kind of my thing, and that was even more than I was used to seeing, you know, in one in one place like that. And so I was excited for Xander because it's not often that he gets to show his skills on the show, and 
this was something that we all knew that he was going to enjoy. get up there and Xander's going first and he is absolutely killing it and it looked like Xander was just in heaven he's like all right these are the parameters this is what I gotta do this is what I'm doing all right cool plugs in just goes he was in his zone well I will point out they didn't have all those speakers wired up I, I will say that most of them were I don't think the top row was that's 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 just that's what I that's what I that's what I saw about the uh, guitar that you were using? Oh, I mean, I'm a Les Paul guy, so you know, they had a nice variety. They had a nice spread, you know what I mean? They had the Jag staying there for people who like a more Fender surfy thing. They had Strats and Tellys and Shred guitars, so of course, you know, they had the SG and the Les Paul. I always grab the Les Paul when I can. My main is a Les Paul Custom, so. have 10 gauge strings on it I could only tune it down to C standard so that's why I didn't get quite the low frequencies I was looking for out of that riff but um yeah it was a nice little guitar I love those things man <laughs> there there was like a mini replica of the Marshall Wall with Funko Pops down in the front of the stage and there was like an unspoken competition where basically they wanted to see if somebody could rumble the stage enough with the right tone to knock over all of the Funko Pops using the Marshall Wall and to our knowledge and nobody's corrected us and I don't think anybody will because I won't believe them. Xander was the only person to knock down all of the Funko Pops. Well, yeah, so yeah, I did, I, I, there was no prize. It wasn't even, not even an official thing, but I was told I was the only guy who knocked over all the little Funko Pops and the Marshall stacks at the front of the stage. All of the Funko Pops of all of those legendary musicians fell to Xander's tone from the Marshall wall. So I was pretty flattered to hear that. It's pretty amazing to see. That's, uh, that's what we do over here. And after uh, Xander Tia went. I used the, the Jag Stang because of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I chose the ugliest one on stage and have zero regrets. I'm little, the guitar short scale, had a humbucker, it's what I wanted. <laughs> Thank you. 
it was a lot of fun to, to see her pick up the Jag Stang and get to play with that again after we had already shot an episode on it and she obviously enjoyed doing that. So even going from like, uh, what was it, one, three to six to all seven, I think? I remember one and three definitely and then obviously seven. <laughs> something that I should have expected but I didn't because at these trade shows and these conventions you hear so many people shredding you know your brain starts to turn to mush but Tia pulled the clean tone out of the Marshall wall and it sounded amazing it was it was so good it was great <laughs> fun like even just with one stack going it was already super loud and again I felt like it wasn't really getting much louder more so that you could just feel more air being pushed your way with like every note every chord <laughs> It literally just felt like you were like bathing in the sound. And then Jason was up. Jason seemed to look at this similar to how I looked at it of kind of intimidating. <laughs> so all of those thoughts are playing into uh, my slight imposter syndrome at the moment. Because this isn't like a usual thing. Like how often do you play in front of just a giant stack of amps. It's not an everyday thing, so if you're constantly questioning your own skills and you have the opportunity to do something really cool, but also it, you know it's going to be really loud and so many people could hear you mess up, it's a big weight on your shoulders. <laughs> so do you remember the guitar that you used? Yes. Kevin's calling me from what was me? Uh, it was an SG. Speaking of uh, scene core music, like, that's what I use. <laughs> But yeah, it was an SG, it was a faded SG, I believe. Outside of the Jax thing, they didn't have a lot of offsets, so I didn't have a lot to work with. But, you know, he knocked it out, he killed it, he did a great job. <laughs> After seeing everybody go, I had had that feeling that I haven't had in a while because I used to play music a lot more. Like I used to be in bands and playing shows and the whole nine, but I 
stopped doing that uh, a couple of years ago and you know picked up a camera and I guess the rest is history but I got that feeling up there and I was like hand me a guitar I decided you know it'd be cool to, to do something different as Jason likes to say for a video on the channel and I decided you know maybe I'll play some guitar gave Xander the camera I picked up the guitar started messing around a bit and it'd been a while since I'd, I'd played in front of people and just the excitement of the moment you know I'm not really thinking of a riff but then it hit me because I thought that I'd feel this at some point because of knowing the situation we were going to be in and knowing all the cool stuff that I was going to be around and I had a capo tucked away in my camera bag <laughs> There's a capo in my bag. Oh, funny. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're a capo guy. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remembered I had the capo and he handed it to me and then it was like, ah, oh, we're back, baby. <laughs> a riff that I love to play uh, from an old song that I wrote and it requires a capo and so I was like oh yeah enough push comes to shove I'll just bust out that riff <laughs> great you know that feeling of the stage shaking around you just from sound is crazy it's absolutely crazy it was awesome it fucking ruled all right so what's your main takeaway from from getting to try out the martial wall holy shit <laughs> like uh... uh my main takeaway is i'm gonna build something similar with orange amps um as soon as this channel takes off and i'm able to easily financially make that move i would like to recreate that in the basement you know you know my takeaway from this is like it makes me wonder about the musicians from like the 60s and such like when they had those like the 60s and 70s when they've had full stacks and they were on because i was like there's no way in hell that i could play this like nowadays like you know i'm over here my 112 is super loud but like a wall Something that was very therapeutic, and I don't think this was intentional, was the way that uh, the speakers, like how it felt pushing against you. You can stand a good distance up front and you can still feel the speakers like pushing you, like or pushing the air pushing you. And to me, that was a very, very unique feeling. You know, Marshalls, they're not my favorite. Um, they're great amps. They're a workhorse for a reason. Uh, again, they don't have the bass or the low end that I really look for, so I was kind of struggling to, to pull that out of there. But uh, man, you can't you can't argue with the uh, results. You know, it sounded great. Uh, and and the other players, the guys who have more of like a uh, like metal and shred style that we heard doing it, uh, they they nailed it totally. Um, they, they they was perfect for those guys. And I, I will say, yeah, like it was awesome. I, I I never got to experience something like that before, and it was a rather pleasant and joyous experience. Basically, it's one of those things that if you have the opportunity to do something cool, go for it. Because you could end up having a great time with some great friends and making some really cool memories like we were able to do when we got to experience the Marshall Wall. You know, I'm I'm just stoked to do it again. Everyone try out the Marshall Wall. If not, if you cannot afford to buy seven full stacks, get all of your friends, all your guitar playing friends together, throw all your amps on a wall, plug it in. It's a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, uh, this little mini documentary is kind of the conclusion on all of our coverage from our trip to Gearfest, and 
you know, we've read the comments and we've heard from some of our audience that not every piece of gear that we highlighted and made videos about was technically working class, as fluid as that definition can be. But the way we were seeing it was like the martial wall, when's the next time you're gonna get a chance to play something that cool? When's the next time you're gonna get a chance to pick up a super expensive guitar that just came out and just jam with some friends and talk about it? And that's what we wanted to do. And if you got that, great. If you didn't like it, sorry. We enjoyed it, we had fun, and we're glad you've decided to stick with us. We will be getting back to our regular working class music episodes, and some things are gonna be a little bit different. We got some changes in store. So, until next time, this has been Working Class Music. Listen to Jason real quick. If you haven't already, you already know, like, subscribe, comment. We love engaging with people. Don't forget our Patreon, which is very important because that gives us money to do more things like this. We do have merch. Check out our socials and uh, yeah, get a wall of marshals. This has been the story of the Marshall Wall. Thank you to everyone who is involved in GearFest and you'll see us next time. Um, definitely the Spark Mini. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in there. <laughs>